Hey guys, Mr. Bexy here. Uh, today we have an ionic versus covalent compound lab for you. All right, uh, we're gonna start it off by taking a look at some different properties about these two different types of bonds and the compound that they make. So if you look at the very top of your lab, you will see a chart kind of outlining these properties for you. You can focus on that on your own time. I'm gonna work you through the procedure here so you can get some data for your lab, okay? The first lab that we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at conductivity of certain compounds. So ionic versus covalent compounds, one of them likes to conduct electricity, the other one not so much. And here's what I mean by conducting electricity. Electrons like to flow through certain materials. So the electrons will actually bounce from one atom to the next, and that's what electricity basically is. So what I made was a little conductometer 3000, uh, patent pending on that one. So what, what I, well it is really, is just a circuit. So I have a battery pack hooked up to this little propeller. If I close the circuit, the propeller will spin. It's showing that the electricity is in fact conducting through the wires and making the motor spin and continuing the circuit, okay? We could just test some random objects, screwdriver. We'll take a look at the metal part of the screwdriver. And you'll notice I'm not gonna touch these. I'll just kind of put them on the screwdriver and it will make the propeller spin because the electricity is in fact running through the screwdriver. If I try it on the handle of the screwdriver, which is plastic, no conduction there, all right? Key, key to my car. Again, the metal part, gonna conduct, the plastic part, not so much. Hole puncher, make a prediction in your head right now, what do you think's gonna happen with the hole puncher? Conducts. Pen, let's try the tape, we already did plastic. Tape not so much, okay? So again, um, our different types of compounds, one will conduct, one will not, let's test them out. So, I'm going to put one end of the probe into the water. Now normally guys, disclaimer here, you are not gonna introduce electricity to any liquids ever, okay? This is an extremely low current. I could even touch them, nothing's gonna happen because it's, I'm only working off a AA battery here, okay? So there's not, not a whole lot of danger here. But normally, you're never gonna try something like this at home. So let's try the sugar water first. I'm gonna put one probe in on one side of the beaker and the other probe in the other. I'm gonna see if the electricity will actually run through the liquid and meet the other probe. And you'll know if the propeller spins. And I got nothing. All right, dry. And let's try the salt water. Again, I want you to notice, the probes are not touching in the solution. The electrons are flowing through the solution to close the circuit, going through the water to close my circuit. So that is in fact conducting electricity. All right guys, next up, we're gonna take a look at again, an ionic and a covalent bond, a compound, to see which one will melt quicker. So I have just plain old salt, and just plain old sugar, I, I measured out exactly one gram of each on my balance over here. And we wanna see how long it takes for each of them to melt. So what we're gonna have here is little homemade frying pans here for you. Soak them in water so they don't light on fire. Just gonna pinch one on the end here. Starting with sugar, this one is sugar. Light my key tan, my tea candle. Start my timer as I lower it down onto the flame. All right, so as you can see, my sugar is starting to melt at about 45 seconds. It began to melt. I'm not going to keep melting because it's going to start to burn and smoke, and I don't want to set off the fire alarms. So we're going to stop it at 45 seconds because when that's when it just started to melt. We're gonna put under sugar, 45 seconds. All right, moving on to salt. Set my timer. Clip on there, light my tea 
be like. All right. And start. All right, so I've been waiting here about five or so minutes and spoiler alert, this is not gonna melt. We need 1,474 degrees Fahrenheit to melt salt. We are not gonna get anywhere near that with our little tea light. So we can stop there. And we could just put will not melt. 